Hello, and welcome to the next step in getting your board ready for game night. In the first video, we showed you how to make rocks. Today, we're going to take those basic building blocks and take them to the next level. Standing stones, henges, dolmens. These megalithic formations will be pushing the complexity just a little bit, but we'll still be using materials you can find around the house. Alright, let's get stuck in. As you can see, Q has a pile of stones left over from the first video. The first thing we're going to do is give them some embellishment. We'll be putting Celtic patterns on ours, you could change it up and do Norse designs on them, really anything that will place them in the middle of a historical or fantasy setting, it's up to you. The first thing you'll want to do is get some card, something thin yet strong enough to hold its form. Any cereal box will do the job. Draw some long sloping lines running roughly parallel to each other. Use the whole piece of card, drawing designs along its length. Draw your stencils in a few different directions and angles, just to mix it up. Grab one of your rocks. Q's using a particularly big one here to really show off what you can do with these stencils. Next, glue the stencils down to the rock making sure to run them flat against the rock surface. Although we're using a glue gun, some elbow grease and PVA glue should do the job. You can see the different designs here, picked out in white over the black base coat. Next, you'll want to base the scenery with black acrylic. You can just go over the white sections, or you can give the whole thing a coat. We've taken these rocks off their base for ease of use, but don't worry if your rocks are still connected to their base. Alright, time to get Neolithic with it. Grab a big bit of cardboard and visualise some rock formations. You can do whatever you want here, but we've gone for a semicircle so that models can move around the centre, making it a really dynamic piece of battle scenery. Really think about the shape of your battlefield here. Do you want to create corridors to fight in? Objectives to take? A hill that gives you plus one to archers? Or even just a cool diorama piece? From here, all we're going to do is rinse and repeat. This is where you can bring a lot of complexity to your game board for very little effort. Like this formation with a large stone perched on top, creating a dolmen.
Build a few formations until you have enough to fill the four corners of your board. Get a little experimental, like making this little altar. Okay, it's time to get these rocks painted up. For a quick recap on video one, we're mixing about two parts white to one part black, with a dollop of blue thrown in for that natural shale color. As you can see, these formations already look great with a single layer of paint, but there's a bit of work left to go. Get a little white on the tip of your brush and wipe off the excess. Then give each rock a dry brush highlight. Mix up a dark wash with some heavily diluted black paint and a touch of washing up liquid. Once this wash is dry, give it another light dry brush with white to really pick out the details. The next stage is a secret close to Q's heart, but we'll let you in on it. He's got a dirt box. Get your mind out of that gutter. No, it's actually a box filled with dirt. It's perfect for war games terrain. But if you find small bits of sand, random stone chips and general dirt, then you can have your own dirt box too. The only consideration is don't use actual mud as anything we apply that's water-based will wash it away. No. PVA the base up until the dirt line and flock it up. And you're done. Getting a layer of dirt in between the rock and flock will create a colour gradient that you'll really be able to notice from a distance. Now you've got formations of standing stones, a few dolmens, maybe even some altars. Terrain that can block the line of sight, give wizards something to fight over, or just make your board look great. Picture this, our weary heroes have travelled far, following the trail of evil druids, worshippers of the fallen lord Eru. As our heroes emerge from a dense wood, they come upon an open field, filled with vast stone structures some 10, 12 feet high, each with an inscription, a picture that is critical to the rituals that shall return Eru from his imprisonment in the Nine Hells. Next week, we'll be bringing all these lessons together to make a passage tomb. So, until then, try hard. Hey guys, welcome to Try Hard Games. I'm Andrew, these are the Try Hard Boys. We're here to help you build better worlds, from fantasy to sci-fi, D&D to Warhammer. We'll be sculpting miniatures, crafting game boards, and a load of memes in between. We'll be putting videos out every week, and we've got big plans, so be sure to hit like and subscribe, and until next time, try hard.
Then not enough footage.